Okay, I thought it might be fun to do some of the combats, film them while I learn the game. This again is Hexasims Sims Austerlitz 1805. Now, all I've done here is I've done the setup and I use the hidden movement and I've moved up the advanced guard up to here. They've just been sighted by Davout's right column. This column has come up and been sighted and deployed and this column has been sighted and deployed. So I'm just at the point where the Russians have moved and Davu has just reacted to that. So I'm going to the 8 a.m. turn. I'll follow the rules for that and maybe we'll get to see how combat will work here. Now I'm doing this for the first time. Hopefully I'll get it right. Maybe I'll make some errors. But anyway, it'll give you an idea of what this uh, game is all about. Okay, so it might be good to show a little bit of a before and after here. So, the uh, left wing under Kainmeyer here has been activated, and it's going to move. Because the sequence of play seems to be you fire or move. So, he's the first act activation for the uh, Russians, Austrians, and he will move. And uh, we'll pick up the action after I've moved the counters. Okay, that's what we have after the advance guard has moved. They've clumb up this ridge and they've closed adjacent to all these French units. Now if I'm following the phasing right, I believe the defenders units will now do defensive fire. I'll just check the rules and we'll execute that. Okay, now checking the movement, I actually declare melee first, then the defender will fire. So I'll take a look at the odds in each of these cases. And if I decide to melee, um, I'll put a melee declaration marker on each stack. Notice I put an activation marker on top of Klenmeyer to remind us that that column has been activated. Let's look at the melee declaration. Okay, we mark the melees like this by putting little wee melee markers and arrows showing which units are meleeing which units. Now, I believe, we go to the defensive fire phase. Let's take a look at that. Okay, not much happened in those defensive fires. The artillery here caused a quality check modifier in this unit. The rest were misses. So the defensive fire by the French was not very effective. I believe now we go to melee, but I'll just check that. Okay, I should point out that before doing the melees, in a couple of instances, I could have retreated before cam combat, I think. Let me just check. Actually, no, I couldn't, because it was cavalry versus cavalry. So these two guys could not have retreated before combat. Okay, so now we're going to do the melees as indicated by the arrows. Okay, we've got this first one here. It's more or less a one-to-one, -one, and the Hussars here are going up a steep slope, so they're going to have to add two to the dice. I'll have to uh, also see what the modifiers are for quality being 7 and the qualifier quality being 8. Maybe they have to add another one. Let me just check. Okay, well that melee result didn't turn out too well for the attacker. He got a QFT2 result plus an R, which means he's going to be doing a quality um, check and uh, reduced. So let's do a quality check first. He rolls a 2. He has to add two, according to the table, so it's really a four. He passed his quality check, but he does get reduced anyway. So he took like 50% casualties charging up that hill. I'll have to see if there's any other um, effects. Okay, as far as I can tell, that's all that happens. That's bad enough, 50% casualties. Okay, these three columns are going to melee this uh, unit here. I'll look at the modifiers, roll the die and let's see what the result is. Okay, this one turns out to be a bit more favorable. The net modifier is negative three. So we'll roll the die, see what we get. Negative three, you rolled a four, it's really a one, and uh, the attacker is just fine. The defender got a QFT2 result and a reduction. So he's got to check his morale, which is eight. You roll one die. He gets a three, even if he adds two, he's fine, but he is reduced. So, whoops, yeah, that charge 
worked fairly well. Yeah, I wonder how you advance after combat. Maybe when after you uh, retreat the fella. I'll have to check that again. Well, it appears as if we're doing that right. Just the nature of the die rolls here. We've been getting lots of casualties and everybody passed the morale check. So this is just one bloody melee around uh, Telknitz here. Now we have this other attack that's going in. Got 12 steps against 8. And they're going up a steep slope too. So let's check the modifiers for that and see what happens. Okay, this one won't be a great melee attack either. It's about plus 3 because the defender has a qualitative advantage. It's also got the steep slope. Adding three melee table. When it gets low enough, three, and uh, so the final result is a six. It's not well. Yeah, it's not bad. So the defender gets a QFT. That means quality fire factor check. And um, yeah, quality factor check. So we roll. Quality's eight. So he's pretty good. Rolls six. He's fine. I've got to check something about the quality checks. I think it says you roll one die, which means a lot of people will be uh, passing their um, quality checks. I wonder if it isn't two die, but I'll uh, check the rule. Yeah, I was doing that wrong. Uh, only for orders do you use one die. So I'm going to roll those three uh, quality checks again because the uh, results could have been different. We'll do a quality check there for him, or rather him. And it was four, so he does fail, and he will go back. Now, I've got some messy situations here. Well, he does have a retreat route, so he'll go there. Now, that fellow got a quality check, so we'll see what he gets. He gets an eight, which means I think he fails. This says quality is seven. Yeah, so we might have a successful melee there. I'll push him back one square. I'll check the advance rules, but I'm pretty sure you can advance into the com into the square if you lose. And um, this fellow had a quality check fail, and he gets a five, but he passes, so that stays the same. Let me just check to see this advance after combat and retreat stuff. Yeah, there were some interesting rules there for advance. Um, cavalry units must advance. This wasn't the case here. We had infantry. So, oh, no, I did have cavalry. Oh, so he goes in. Yeah. And the other rule was the uh, infantry uh, had an optional advance. So that's the end of the combats around here. Although we have one more there. This two column attack hitting this one. This should be a decisive battle, too. Okay, that one worked out to be a two to one attack, but the Modifiers are totally equal. It's minus two plus two. So uh, let's see what happens in this melee. We get a seven. The attacker has to do a quality check and the defender does. So uh, I'll roll each of those and see what happens. When you fail a quality check, it's a bit more severe than I thought. In this case, actually the attacker and defender both failed, which means they all have to retreat. It says quality checks are per hex. So this defender will have to fall back, I'll say to here. These two attackers will also have to fall back. And it's a complete repulse. So the hill held. And that's some typical combats on this side. They're not difficult to do. I think the system is fairly clean and uh, I quite like it. So I'm going to wrap the video there. I just wanted to have something on film about how a uh, typical attack is done and uh, I'll get better at this as I play the game more but um, that's generally how combat works and uh, that's it for Austerlitz 1805 Rising Eagles